Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? If you can, please let me know. And we shall uh, get going. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear myself, so that's good, <laughs> I guess. Right, so people this morning good morning or good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world um, so what what's the plan what are we doing so I have a model ship as you can see here which is HMS Monmouth the armored cruiser from World War one I, I had this is gonna be version 2 because this is what I had for version 1. Version 1 was about 75-80% to 80 complete. The only issue I had was, well, unfortunately I made the ship roughly about 15 meters too long. So when it came to actually preparing everything for the video, and then obviously producing the C, working out you know, how we can make something bigger, I then realized that when it came to actually looking at how big the sea was, there was a little annotation, clicked on the Monmouth, looked, saw how big the ship was, and it was 166 meters long, and I was like, oh no, oh, that's three weeks worth of work gone down the drain, so. Unfortunately, I'm having to completely rebuild the ship. So, that is unfortunately what we're doing. So we're going to be going back into it, rebuilding Monmouth, and luckily enough, I have done some of this off screen, so, you know, if you're looking at it right now, you know, there, it, I'm not starting from scratch. This has obviously taken, well, the hull was about two hours last night, and I did it in a different format to how I would usually do it, so we're going from there. Now, the interesting thing about the hull I've made is I've made the plating look right. So when you look at the ship and when you do when the video comes out, because don't forget, I had actually started making the video. But when the video comes out, you will see when you go close up to the ship, if I can show you on this side, you can see that even the plating is modeled on the side of the ship. Okay. So it's not just a low poly model, it is actually a genuine, proper three-dimensional model of a ship that is meant to be accurate, okay? Now, obviously, I've got the overall shape of the ship done. I just need to now smooth out the hull, make sure it all looks nice and sexy, how it's meant to look. And then we obviously move on and do the other little bits and bobs that we need to. So. As you can see with the original model of Monmouth, that's how far I got, and as you can see, it's a little bit too big. Hence why the new Monmouth I've built is the right size. Now, before anyone starts asking questions of why don't I just, you know, resize the ship, make it, you know, 144 meters, or well, 141 meters long, it doesn't unfortunately work like that. Because everything's scaled to an image, all the proportions will look different. So what I'll have to do is go through this and resize every object individually. So the gun turrets will need to be done individually. The masts, the funnels, the searchlights, the semaphore towers, that's kind of the thing we'll need to do. So let's stop me from talking. As you can see, that's how big the ship is, the real ship, compared to how big the new, well, the old one is. As you can see, old one new one anyone unfortunately it does look a bit better <laughs> the old one does but the new one is going to be more realistic to how the ship really is now the stream's going to go on for maybe a couple of hours depending on how you know how you guys you know view it how you how much you engage that type of thing it's one of those that I, you know, I want to, I want to make sure I, you know, at least do a video or 
a live stream to make sure that you know you guys actually get some sort of content because yes i know it's a bit of an issue with me you know not uploading for a while that was that's my personal issue so i do apologize about that but i am back i am trying to <laughs> trying to do this for you guys I'm trying to be a better youtuber for you all so let's get into building monmouth making sure that she is going to be the best model we can for obviously the briefing on the monmouth class cruisers because there's 10 of them but also later on down the line when we actually get to have the video of the battle of coronel an actual documentary so first things first what i need to do is make sure that when it comes to smoothing out the hull because there is a lot of different angles with the ship obviously there's plating that needs to go onto the outside and it layers a bit like how titanic's hull facing if you ever look at that is that's how it sort of looks and that's how we're going to go through it we're going to make sure it's all gucci or looking nice it's all nice and smooth so it you know it doesn't look like it has big massive plates on the side of the ship that's kind of the idea now those of you wondering or if you think the audio is a bit dodgy i do apologize this is not my normal recording area this is my girlfriend's house and i couldn't really change that so this is what we have okay so slight little bits and bolts we need to do first is the deletion of some of the exterior plating that doesn't look let me rephrase that some of the exterior plating that doesn't really fit so stuff like this okay i feel like i'm going back into my own minecraft <laughs> way of doing things there we are so as you can see the plating actually does you know overlap now the interesting thing is with the forward and aft ends of the ships especially these olden day ships that are riveted together there is plates for the forward and aft ends so where the keel of the ship comes up and then you have the stem and the stern essentially girders or the uh, stem and stern pieces they have plating around them to protect them because they're the central part of the ship and they're integral to the ship's structure and they have protective plating essentially around the ship so if you look at the forward end of the ship by here even though I have the tiny little like knife edge type of strip down the front end of the ship to make the ship go through the water better you still have this additional plating you see here it goes all the way down to the bottom that is the protective uh, sheeting around that part of the ship that, and that's accurate to how well at least what HMS Caroline looks like so that's that, that's good this is this is what we're trying to do we're trying to make a realistic model very similar to how uh, I don't think any of you follow this gentleman but there's a gentleman on the internet called uh, found and explained who I recently found and he's actually a really cool guy he does three-dimensional models but he does them on aircraft and this is how he kind of does them does it so it, it's it was one of those I thought oh that's actually quite cool I want to get into 3d modeling anyway and I did attempt the 3d modeling of a ship that many of you might remember being HMS M28 which I've gone back and forth on um, obviously I was meant to have finished the ship I didn't uh, for personal reasons so yeah we am she's still she's in a dry dock right now she's not built but it's one of those so we'll uh, we'll have that done at some point might go back through and redo the entire ship and do it in blender instead of cinema 3d just because i think blender is more of a professional software whereas cinema 3d granted it is more expensive it's i think blender's got 
more facilities for persons like me who'd want to make you know nice crisp models and nice animations to tell a story and it just it feels like it's better on my computer than it is on something like um What is this playing up for? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So that's um that's why I've reverted back to using obviously this program. Now the ship is actually mirrored, for those of you who don't know. You can mirror objects in Blender. So you can do one side of the ship and the other side will be copied, essentially. It's it's very similar to whoever used to play Minecraft and they had the world edit software. You could select one side of the ship, copy it to the other side, and Bob's your uncle, you've got a full ship. It's very similar to that, however, from the get-go, you can basically mirror from one side to the other side. The only downside is, is when you actually come to it, you can't actually do something different on the other side it doesn't really work so when you've got two anchors on this side and one anchor on this side it doesn't really work that well but that's an issue for later on down the line the focus for today is to try and make sure that this hull is done because unfortunately i am basically three weeks behind now and i need to, i need to make sure that this ship is done at least for the 1st of November. 1st of November is where I'm gunning for for the first video to be re to be uploaded. As those of you who are scholars of history will know that the Battle of Coronel was fought on the 1st of November 20... Uh, sorry. 1st of November 1914. And that is where Monmouth, along with Good Hope, and a couple of... Well, yeah, it was just Monmouth and Good Hope were sunk because of overwhelming German firepower from von Spee and his lovely little squadron of armoured cruisers. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the history of it. And, you know, it's it's what I want to do. I want to make sure that, you know, I want to make sure history comes alive. I want to make sure that people can see and visualise the history of, you know, a, a a somewhat forgotten part of history because whenever you ask someone to obviously explain oh yeah so how many so what's the battles of the first world war in terms of the naval aspect and people would be like oh well there was Jutland there was another battle um Helgoland or Dogger Bank but people seem to forget that actually in reality there was a lot more battles in the first world war than just you know Jutland or Dogger Bank and that's kind of what I'm gunning for, to be able to visualise this and you know make make the ships, you know how they're meant to look and how release the grandeur of these old ships. Very similar to how World of Warships does it, but obviously making it sure that the ships actually look like they were meant to, and have been accurate, <laughs> unlike World of Warships where they decide to randomly stick in, well. Yes, well, the warships, you know what they're like. They they don't, they claim to do the accuracy, but they don't really do the accuracy at all. Which is quite sad for a historical game. Well, quoted to be a historical game. Oh, yeah. So, those of you interested, um, or if you want to get Blender, Blender is it's free you can find it on the internet um, there's a lot of people who use it a lot of very good people use it um, I'm technically still in my infancy with it um, I mean I I've used it quite a lot but I'm still you know still learning the ropes I I feel like obviously doing bomber for the first time was but easy well, it was easy to understand how to work out some of the aspects of actually how Blender works. So being able to put in stuff like railings. Railings was a very key issue I found. I 
because I was trying to do it with a single piece of cylinder. I then found out that, you know, there was a different way of doing it, a much easier way of doing it. And that is something that I think was good about, you know, at least learning that you know, Blender has a couple of little quirks that you can use to make sure that, you know, you can make the ships look good. They don't have to be these most complicated, pain in the backside things. They are actually you know, kind of easy. Even when you follow a tutorial on the internet, sometimes it is, it looks hard. But in reality, it's not. It's it's quite easy. It's 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 somewhat relaxing, which might make you think, "Hey, what are you on about?" But yeah, it's it's quite relaxing. It's nice to you know, just sit back, relax, uh, stick on some music, and just go with the flow. Just build, um, and just you know, just just do what you need to do. Like, don't get me wrong. It, it's a bummer when you you sink so many hours into a project and then it turns out that, oh god, you've made it a little bit too big. I mean, yeah, that's that's an issue. It's it's annoying. But in actuality, it's not that bad. It's quite It's quite refreshing to just you know, start from scratch have a go again you know be better at something than you were first time which a lot of people seem to actually forget you know it you're not you're not a master first time you're still technically learning and it takes a lot of time and efforts to get good at something like for granted I <laughs> I wasn't a master at being a electronic warfare rating at all in the Navy. I it took a lot of effort to try and, you know, be good at what I was meant to be good at. So, you know, it's it's a good way to look at it. Just you know, you're not amazing at things straight off the bat. You you do require a little bit of training. And training is, you know, what you need to be good at something. And I shouldn't have deleted that bit. As you can see by here, you can see the plating it goes in slightly. That's that's what I wanted to obviously show. When you look at the other Monmouth, the new one, or no, the old one, sorry. When you look at the old, the older Monmouth model, you can see that obviously they've got all the plating in place. But I think by the point I got to the well, to the stage I got with the ship there wasn't really much point in trying to add any more detail to it because at that stage the ship was near enough complete and if I tried to edit any of it it would heavily affect the overall look and the overall feel of the ship which is, you know, it, it's an issue but it was one of those that, you know, it had to be done, and I'm and I'm kind of glad that you know I've had to redo it, bring in loads of skills that you know, I didn't have previous. It's also very interesting when you look at World War One armed cruisers, is all the different shapes they have with them. So obviously you have stuff like the casement guns. As you can see on the top-down view, casement guns obviously sticking out the side of the ship, too forward, too aft, and one amidships. Or if you're looking at a Drake class, which Good Hope was part of, they have two technically beam guns. So it's it's very interesting, I personally think, from a design perspective. <laughs> However. Unfortunately for the British and the Royal Navy, that would come and bite them in the backside because, you know, it's it's not a good design. If you have any wins over Sea State 3, well, any seas over Sea State 3, you can't use them because cause they're so close to the water and then obviously you've got water slashing over the decks or if you're 
having to engage something, you can't use the lower turrets or the lower casements because you know you can't because they're being waterlogged and you have to close them off and obviously increase the ship's water size integrity because if you don't, you have this bigger issue of you're going to start to flood because the decks in here, I'm pretty sure where we've got the lower casements, I'm pretty sure that's an open deck straight across there. I think, don't call me on that because I'm pretty sure all of that is mess deck. And obviously, after your officer's quarters. So, I mean, it's it's one of those. It's a very... It, it's not a great design, but you can see where I'm coming from. It was one of those that isn't great. But if you, t if you have an issue, you want to close those off. Because if you don't, you're kind of sleeping with the fishes. And the Navy knew that. It's just a shame that when they came to design the armoured cruisers, they kind of sort of seem to have forgotten that in the eventuality that the ship has to engage something, they didn't really think about, you know, as a slight issue of if we have to engage, the guns might not be able to fire because there's too much water going over the ship. Oh well, that's that's something that obviously they had a look at and they changed for later later ships. So yeah, that's that's armored cruisers and their funky little designs. But even though that you know a Monmouth class cruiser is not the world's most famous ship. They, they, they're not bad. They aren't bad as a ship class. Okay, they're they're good in regards to obviously what they're intended to do, which was commerce raiding, uh, commerce protection. They were good ships for that role. Just not going up against von Spee and. Is a little fun squadron of the Scharnhorst, Neisenau, Leipzig, Dresden, and was it Emden? I can't remember. There might have been. There's a third cruiser, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now. But yeah, they're <laughs> taking one of these up against one of those is definitely not a good idea. Now. When you, if you come to try and build a ship like this in Blender, recommendations are, one, make sure, that if you obviously build the ship, make sure that the ship follows the plans, but also make sure that the plans are the same size. I have an issue here. So when you look at this plan here, and we look at this plan here, you can see that I have lined up this section by here. You might be might be hard to see, but if I highlight this section, this section by here is a break from the forecastle down to the top of the starboard side and technically port side casement guns. By here, you can see it's in line with the back of this bridge wing. When you look at the side image, it's fine by there. However, when you come backwards to using the ship bucket image, you can see that by here, this is where the section ends. And then this is where the, there, that's where the guns will sit. Whereas if you look at the actual image of the ship, I'll break it down into wire view mode. You can see here that that position there is on the ship bucket model is where this section ends. Whereas on obviously the plan view by here is that's the cutout there. And this is the issue you have because sometimes when you come to build the ship, you have quite questionable plans. So this one is not actually straight. 
this uh, top view isn't it's off by 0 0.04 degrees and those 0 0.04 degrees mean a lot when it comes to actually building a ship that's the issue <laughs> i've run into i spent about an hour trying to work out why on earth this is not looking right turns out the plan was off by 0 0.4 degrees or 0 0.04 which makes havoc when you try to actually build it properly so yeah that's that's an issue you have but then you also have another image so if I'm going to get rid of that one plunk this into place And we'll put in the set the other plan image I have. So when it came to Monmouth and actually having the photos or the plans for the ship, what we tended to do was, or what I tended to do, was have side view and a top view, which was key. Unfortunately, with the Monmouths, you can't actually get a per bulkhead look at the actual hull. So you have to kind of eyeball it and kind of wing it. I think, personally, from what I've done, I've done a pretty decent job of it so far. But there was also another plan, which is what you kind of need. So this plan here is what was with the top view. It's to the same scale, and then what you then do is you make it to the size you need so this is kind of the issue I have ran into in the past is when putting in the actual plans for the ship sometimes they don't exactly fit and as you can see by here it doesn't fit because when you look at the decks, slightly funky up here, but also sometimes it fits nicely at the back. So that means that sometimes these plans aren't completely 100% accurate. Sometimes they're you know, blown up to be better. Sometimes they're not exactly in the right place. So with this model, this image by here, you have to re rejig it just about right to be able to put it into place. And as you can see by here, that is near enough right. The only problem is, is you need to move it slightly forward. There we are. So that's kind of that. Hey, yeah, I'm back. I'm sorry about me disappearing. Why is my... Bear with my mouse side to die on me. There we are. That's better. Mouse is reconnected. <laughs> Blinking technical issues. So, as you can see, that's how you make it look good. So if we get that, we can then work out where the living hell, this one, is not working. Now obviously, as you can tell, I've obviously you know, shaped the ship to this image. There is also the issue of it's not right. <laughs> not right at all and then obviously that takes a little bit of fondling to try and make it work right and I'm pretty sure all I need to do is just move it backwards like that so you probably missed the first bit Yuri but um I had an original one, which I'll show you now. 
this was the original one and I was actually preparing to stick the last bit of details on board and I was also making water and land for the actual video for the Monmouth class which would then eventually go into a Battle of Coronel documentary however I then realised the ship was too big so I'm having to rebuild it for the exact reason why I want to have this documentary to have ships in the right scale for the Coronel video and also the Falklands video because if you think about it two of these also took part in the Battle of the Falkland Islands which sank Germ the German squadron which is quite cool now this should in theory be right I hope if it's not, I'm going to be very annoyed. And it's not. It needs to be brought back. And this is the this is sometimes the issues where when you actually use some plans, you try to make them to the same scale. Sometimes they're slightly off, which is an issue. So if you wanted to use something like the ship bucket images, they're not always completely accurate to how the ship is really portrayed. Whereas if you use an image like this, which is a line drawing, sometimes they're also not completely 100% accurate. And that is an issue. It is a very, very big issue. But on the bright side, we it only takes a couple little bits of tweaking to make sure the ship is kind of right. So, all we need to do is go into edit mode on that one and just tweak it. Now, as you can see here, there is a slight discrepancy because on the ship bucket image, these casement guns are actually lower to the water than they normally would be. No. So when I re tried to resize the bigger one, the proportions were way out. Like, massively way out. So, I opted to go for the rebuild. And the rebuild, I personally think, is a better option. And, well, it... There's a lot of things I learned with the original, and there's a lot of things I can improve on. So stuff like uh, hull plating. I try to implement, implement hull plating onto the original Monmouth model, which I did to some effect. The only problem was when it came to it, some of the hull plating I wanted to have, it just wouldn't exactly work with the model I had built. So hence why I then opted to go for a newer model using all the lessons I've learned before, implement all the hull plating into the hull while I'm building it, and then I can just grab bits and bobs from the old model, resize them into this, and then go from there. That's kind of how my idea is. If it works, we'll have to see. But that's kind of how I'm kind of shooting for it right now. Uh, bah, 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 bah. And I mean, there's a lot of things I've learned from it. So, for starters, the transform section, I've now learned how to use properly so I can actually get things in the right place. So I'm not having to eyeball it and go, is that the right place, is it not? I can now go in and actually do it properly and it's all lined up exactly right. It's all a bit of trial and error. But that being said, it's it's going all right. It's not bad. This is good. Just, you know, like for example, this this by here. This line by here is a pain in the butt because even though it looks fine, it's it's one of those. It's it's the bane of my life because you need to make sure the ship is right and then. When it comes to something like this, you then have to go, oh, it's 
it's slightly off, so you have to then readjust it. That's the problem about going from one plan to a different plan. I mean, first world problems and all, but it's <laughs> it's it's one of those little bugbears of you know doing the modelling. But it's it's enjoyable. Just don't ask my partner. <laughs> she says I spend way too much time doing this. But then again, we can sell these things on the internet and they're a decent price for about a thousand pound each. I mean, can you really blame anyone for not trying to do it? <laughs> However, you know, I'm not in it for the money, I'm in it for the, you know, to do the history. And to make a pretty nice model. Which, you know, in the process, if you can do it good enough that you can technically make a model out of it, or a a, uh, you know, a version of a model, then happy days. But it doesn't mean that obviously there isn't any models of these ships out there. There definitely is. There's a resin version of this model you can find. Uh, it's done by a Russian company. I can't remember the name. It might be Combrig. No, they, I think there was a... No, Combrig's a lego company <laughs> or knockoff lego company it's something along those lines and they they have a one to seven hundred scale version of this model which i made and it went into the museum in monmouth natural town for the i think it was the 100th anniversary of the battle of coronel because you know the town of monmouth is very very pro navy, as you know, you'd expect it to be. So you know, we <laughs> the town's had seven, or was it? No, it's six Monmouths. Obviously, being um, one being an armored cruiser, the other one being what well, the most latest one being the art. Oh, what, she she's a Type Twenty Three. So it's it it that's kind of that's kind of how it is. It's just. One of those. That's that's not right. I think that's because of the curvature of the hull. Unless. No. No, no. So, slight issue is. So, with the casements, I personally just mold them in because it's a lot easier to do that because there's a lot of other stuff you have to add to it that's the issue and plus it it feels easy when it's actually just you know a single section of the ship instead of multiple different cylinders then you have to cut them all out and add the decks into place because to make these guns the casements turn you actually have to build the inside of the deck inside decks and then sort of model it slightly. So when the gun turns and you have the right enough angle, you can just about see inside, which is the problem. Which is another reason why I wanted to sort of make a newer version of the model. I could then do that properly. And I say do everything properly. I, you know, I want to do this correct because you know, it's it's kind of the history of my local town. It's one of those that, you know, people will look at and people will learn from. You never know. BBC might go, oh, yeah, so you can, we can use you. <laughs> well, I don't know if you'd want the BBC to... You know, do it. Hello, Jaish. You're right. How are you this lovely morning? Apparently it's 57 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I, if anyone knows how to change the uh, temperature, please let me know, because I'm not in America. <laughs> Which is <laughs> it's really annoying. Especially when your girlfriend's like, oh yeah, what's, what's the temperature outside? And it's like, mm, I don't know. Apparently 57 degrees Fahrenheit. And she's like, all right, what's that in, uh, you know, Celsius? And I was like, it's a good question.
Glad you asked. I haven't got a clue. I haven't got a Scooby Doo. Uh, right. That. Um, is it like that? Yeah, we'll do that. It's gonna be four point two 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 two. I've I followed the channel. I haven't actually had a look at them. But I know some of the models are pretty good, and some of the some of the drawings are actually very very good. They are stupidly good. They are very, very good. I mean, his his Titanic one looks top notch. Ah, fair. <laughs> Thirty degrees. See, I prefer it when it's not boiling hot. I like it cold. I'm a heathen. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the heat. Hmm. That needs to be brought into about there, so then we actually grilled out the casements on the sides. You know, it's still sticking out. We can then play around with a funny little curved bottom on it. Now, technically speaking, that part there should go. We don't need it. If we look at the side plan, yeah, that needs to go. So, ditch. Oh, sod it. There. Cool. But this is... Is it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are they are crazy on this. Although, believe it or not, the night the guns are actually from the oh, when is it? I think the guns were made in night in eighteen eighteen ninety odd, because these ships were laid down at the very end of the 20th century. So it, it kind of shows how old these ships are. They are old. Right, let's leave that a minute. Could merge that up to there. And then bring that into line with that. So copy, no, no, copy, paste. Pass in line and Pretty sure that's the one I need. Yeah, cool. So then we can just implement the plating like that, and then just plonk it in. And so I, ha I have all the guns prepped and ready to go, as you probably expect, you know, <laughs> with the progress I made and. Made all the gun turrets, you know, being able to turn and elevate, because, you know, you need to do that to make it animated and look realistic. The, the muzzles are very, very strange. They, even though, you know, from a history perspective, you can technically work out that, you know, that they're, they're not as big as how they are on plans. It's, it's still ridiculous it does make you wonder sometimes like eh, did they really think about this when they actually built these ships or did they just say Haha! oh well yolo it it'd be fine don't worry about it we are British it doesn't break 
Although, don't tell that to the crew of the Monmouth because they lost their forward turret when it spontaneously detonated. Which is never a good thing. Right. What's the difference between that and that? So, calculator. Yeah, great. Question, what's the difference between 9.4375 and 9.3424? Just a quick question, just so I can work this one out when I plonk this into place. So I'm actually got a notepad and a pen with me, which is annoying. Um, actually, there's many to do this. Do it like this. Uh, give that up. Was it? So it was. Nine point four three seven five minus nine point three four two four. Okay, so all I need to do is remove Okay, so remember zero point zero nine five one. So what is nine point seven four four oh, oh, five seven three minus zero point zero what was it? Uh there we go. Nine five one. This is to work out the calculation to work out how far in this little block by here, or this little point needs to be. That needs to be 9.65063. There we are. That's what we do. And work out that. How far away is that? That's there, that's there. Next is that one. Nine point Cool. So, right now I can just go like that, fill that in. Bang, sorted. And then we just go from here. You can fill in the hole. Because no one likes a hole in the side of a ship. Especially by here, because this is technically the waterline. And ships don't like massive ingresses of water because they seem to sink. Which is understandable. Now we just need to work out the focus on the weird ass curve. So I did a lot of uh, watching how Wargaming builds their models. Because they did a nice little video or time lapse of how they built HUD for World Warships. So I was having a look at that and how they built it. Turns out when they build a ship, they go from, which is kind of ironic, from the bow to the stern, which is very Minecrafty. But in relation to that, what they do is they start at the very stem right here, and then they do all the angles. So how the ship goes from, uh, best way to describe it is like there. They will use that section there. They will slightly angle it up to where the deck is, or they'll bring it out to where the deck is, and then angle it downwards to the uh, to the waterline, and then down to the bottom of the ship. They do it like that, and then they work their way out and then back. That's how I've done it with this, just because I thought, why not? It's not going to kill me. It's just going to be. Yeah, I think it was. No, I think it was HMS Hood. Uh, what was it called? It was HMS Hood Time Lapse. I think it was called. And yeah, it was actually quite cool. So that's 
kind of how I did it. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what the hell am I doing? Don't worry, it's fine. I'm apparently a professional. Apparently. What is wrong with that? What is wrong by there? Yes, it was five years ago. The reason I know it is because I had a look at it and it was like, whoa, is that really five years ago? Shoot. Damn. I think I bought the ship when it initially came out. And I remember it being awful. Like, very bad. It was... Like, I bought Mikasa. Or, no, I didn't buy Mikasa when she came out. I... I think I won the Mikasa. But, even still... I... <laughs> I actually thought Hood was worse than Mikasa. Which is saying something, but apparently she's a lot better now. Apparently, I think I'm, I think I went on. I think I was quoted as saying, "Mikasa was like shooting a." Mikasa's guns were like shooting explosive diarrhea. But you know, you know, it's it's a good ship when you know you try and shoot and your shells go left, right, center, up and down, but they don't even go anywhere near your target which is probably the reason why they then made the ship a technically secondary focus vessel I think from what I gather I don't really play the game anymore I mean I occasionally delve into it have a look see what new ships they have um, occasionally play a match or two until my laptop decides it doesn't want to play no more. Or my internet decides to just die. That's one of the things it likes to do. Which is quite annoying because where I live in the countryside, it's it's an issue. It's a damn right issue. Especially when there's a storm. Don't do it in the storm. Very bad idea. How is that now wrong? Huh? What? Uh, for... uh, right. And this, kids, is the issue I have. So, when? Image A and image B are from the same image, but when you put them together, they don't look right. This is the problem I had with the original Monmouth. Um, there's a couple you can find, but... It's um, it's kind of hard to work out what exactly is correct. So I mean, you can go onto free, uh, what is it called? Free three D models, and you can go for it on that. That's a good one you can go on to. But aside from that, if you want something that's pretty accurate, my personal opinion is just kind of do it yourself and then <laughs> go with, go at it that way that's oh I should not have done that personally that's what I would do but that's because I've done a few of these before and I've realized you know some of the stuff that you kind of require it's um it's not great <laughs> But yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that. Just, you know, do it that way. 
Now this is the issue I'm going to have. It's trying to fill this hole in and then do something called an extrude, which then brings the section upwards. So then you can technically create a superstructure esque section. That's kind of how you want to do it. Um, but then with this, because there's a section that goes up and then this entire section aft is a lower deck, but there's a gunnel around the side, you have to then extrude the deck downwards. And then behind here, there's a technically a two, one and a half deck drop on it. it it's, it's confusing. It really is confusing. And unless you actually have a proper model of the ship, you cannot work it out. I, I've been using a model that I found on the internet of HMS Cornwall. So Cornwall is one of the sister ships of Monmouth. And whoever's done the actual vid, well, the actual model of the ship, it's a low res, it's a low rendered, or well, it's low in terms of how many like vertical uh, vertices it's got in it. It's it's strange, and I was actually going to use it for a video, and then miraculously, I then thought, ah, oh, you know, I'll do it myself. Worst idea I've ever done. <laughs> it's a bad idea. It's a bad, bad, bad mistake. However, you know, it it makes you learn things. Makes you actually learn some new and fun skills. Shall we say? But I occasionally use it for reference. It's like some some aspects of it are correct, some aspects are not exactly correct. And why is that doing that? And I think I know why. I'm pretty sure some aspects are not in the right place. It's like by here. Yeah, that's... That's kind of a bit balked. And this is the problem you have with obviously making ships if you don't actually, if you've never do, done one, is, you know, making sure that the image is correct or making sure that the pieces you put into place are correct because you don't want to, you know, spend what, three weeks building a ship and then realizing that you've done it wrong. Because trust me, that's not cool. It is really not cool. Yeah, I'm going from just images. Just because I find it, I find if you can visualize it properly, say for instance for a three-dimensional model, you can then get a better idea of things. That's my personal opinion. But obviously people are different. I mean, because I've obviously watched It's a great question, I don't actually know. I think it's just the many years of playing Minecraft. <laughs> I think it's just that. Stupid amount of years playing Minecraft and then working out how to do hulls. I think that's the kind of the the thing I've worked out. And that kids is how you build the R5 superstructure. And that is why it's wrong. Got you. That is it. There. So there's. So what I tend to find is if you, sometimes you can you think to yourself, yeah, I'm making good progress here. 
Sometimes it, you look at it and go, I haven't made any progress at all, but in reality you have. And then sometimes you think, oh, this is going really well. And then you realize that's the reason why, because it's not kind of accurate. That's better. <laughs> kids never change. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say I'm a kid anymore. I'm 24 years old. Right, that is there. And now, we're going to make sure that all these merge together to form a coherent single deck. So, those two, oh, no, don't do that. This is not the issue. Because I now need to work out. Yeah, that's the problem. So the way it's been extruded upwards means it's now not technically in line with the deck. So then creates weird vertices and other fun stuff that you just don't want to deal with. Like right here, if you look at it, you can see there's multiple different ways of or multiple different heights and positions for all these little sections. That's kind of not what you want. You kind of want it to be all nice and level. Which I'll sort out in a second, but actually I'll sort out now. So that goes into there, that should be on deck level. I should be on the deck level, and then you got all those funny little bits. Which I'm not going to touch with the barge pole yet. Cool. And now, this is the other fun part about 3D modeling, is trying to work out, or trying to get all the positions to be the same place or the same location oh, no. so all these three by here are not in line let's have a look so they need to be vertical the question is which one is Hello, whiskey. Hmm. Yeah, so as you can see by there, even though you technically think you are making a straight line. So, right. And that, but there, is how you get another raised section. 
Also, let's get rid of that because we don't need it. Bye. Let's fill that in. There we are. Let me have that section done. That's the raised focus all complete. You then obviously have to then move on to doing other things, which is the next issue we'll have to do. So, looking at it, once we get the rear part of this in place, so sorting out the aft gun position, we'll then smooth out the hull to make sure it looks all nice and groovy and sexy and all that jazz and how it, a ship is meant to look, not weirdly plated, even though there is technically plates, but you know what I mean. We can then work out on that and hopefully at some point we can then get onto getting the old stuff off the old Monmouth onto the new Monmouth and then basically making it, you know, how it's meant to look. And then hopefully three weeks of my life was not ruined doing a poxy model that was free bloody about 15 meters longer than it should have bloody been. And now as you, as you can see by here, there was also the issue that you can obviously see is some bits are not in the right place because of obviously plans that, well, yeah. We will not go over that. I think I've beaten that horse to death today. Let's just grab both those, bring it in. Cool. Bring that to there. So even though I've tried to actually stick in all the lines for the ship to make sure that, you know, it's all groovy and looks fine there is obviously some issues. Now, depending on how this goes, depending on how the video will go, I want a couple of ideas of what else I should do, ship-wise. Because what this kind of offers is a way of doing ships that not really many people know about, or there's not really many photos of ships so stuff like uh, I'm just trying to think what doesn't really have any decent photos of it I can't think of anything that's not got any good photos that's annoying um, We'll just go with, it provides a way of being able to do ships in a more of a professional standard. And you have a better way of understanding how the ship is actually built. We'll go for that. That's probably the better way of saying it. If you all agree. I mean, to be fair, I'm going out on a gamble here and doing this, you know, not... Trying to change way of doing videos is kind of ballsy. Not unheard of. I bring that down to there. Which one do I have selected then? Oh, hello. I forgot I had these two. I forgot I adjusted some. Of these, uh, bum, 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 bum. thirteen point six. There we go. That should now work fine. So look. So then we can then extrude that inside to do the gun to the gunnels inside and then yeah that's fine cool that's fine don't need to worry about that now is the issue of 
fixing the rest of this gun or casement or whatever else you want to call it. But that one can probably get yeeted off. And fill that in. Is that... That shouldn't be... Yeah, it is. That's fine. That's fine. No need to worry. Come there. 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 Wink. And in there. Oh, we've lost it. No, that, that's where it needs to be. So that needs to be... Oh, where is it? It's that one, isn't it? Uh, no, it doesn't. That's annoying. I'm planning on not disappearing for the rest of my life. I can assure you of that. I don't really want to disappear again, because it, weirdly enough, it actually, I gain more subscribers when I, you know, disappear. <laughs> than I do when I'm actually, you know, doing it normally, which is weird. But unfortunately, it's kind of the way that YouTube is. That's the nature of the beast. So we can't really, you know, can't really go up against it or you can't really change it. That's just kind of how people do things. And to be fair, if you think about it, if you can, if you can get this to look cool, if you can get this to be right, you can, you can do some pretty cool shots. So, say for instance, the I did a new video on the Type Zero Five Five, the Ren High class, which, ironically. People seem to love, probably because it's you know it's Chinese. Um, it's I could technically do the shots, or I could show them conducting the ballistic missile shots. I think this will be able to you know, give me a bit more of a helping hand in terms of. You know, longevity of channel type thing. Because, yeah, it's all well and good stating that, you know, it's... This is a way the channel can go. And it, it works for some people, but I think, personally, for me, it wasn't really working. Personally. I mean, your, mail, your mileage might vary. But I didn't think it was working for me. Hmm. Oh dear. By the wrong one. That one then. I think. Yeah, there we are. That'll be fun. Just match those up. Then I can just, yeah, you know, fill a hole in. So more water doesn't come in the side of the ship. Because it will. Oh, no. 
Okay. So from here now on, you then have to juggle it and do some funky, weird curves and angles. It's all a bit confusing with the ship, unfortunately. However, what I do want to do first. Yeah, we'll continue that in a second. So I'm just trying to find the way the best way to do this. Um move this over to there. Cool. So that's that, that's that. So I can curve that in. So we're then going to move on to doing the half past the superstructure. This is what we're going to do next. Because once I've got all this angling into place and all that jazz, I can then sort out the hull. That's what we can then do. And I'll then need to work on... There's... So when you actually do a hull of a ship, especially with riveting, you have... Obviously, your plates on top of the plates, very similar to how Titan Effect did it. But then you also have plates that go between the two plates to make sure the plates don't move. It's very complicated. I will show you in a minute. Let me just do some angling, and I'll get to it in a second. It's kind of annoying how that plan down the bottom is different to that plan. Really annoying. Okay, so yeah, so we need to go from that one. No, it's roughly... Is that the line? Yes? Okay, now. Yeah, that's fine. So with that in mind, we can now delete that section. These two sections over here can get yeeted off the ship for now, because we don't need them. And then what we can also do is, this is not really how you'd normally do it. However, I'm going to do it anyway. is do it like that. That way, uh, where is it? I can then get rid of those two sections there. So boink and boink, you can go bye-bye. And this is where you can then sort out that half section. Okay, do we have Handling, yes we do. Or plating. We technically do. Right. And that is an issue we're going to have. Just that. Just that, cool. We then need to move or merge that into the place of that one. Let's go to there. Move to the last. And then if you look at it very carefully, or you look at it logically, if you know ships very well, how they're built, sometimes you will have sections like this, where an inner panel will go up against a newer section. It's very similar to a tank, to an angled section. Sometimes they will be flush together. Sometimes they won't be flush together. It's not armor. You think it's armor, but it really isn't. That is just plating. That's just hull plating. Which is crazy if you think about it. Actually, hang on. Hang, 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 hang on a minute. Hang on. We're going to do this right, we're going to do this right. Ditch that, point that off. Uh, no, 
No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no. Come back after that. We are not merging that together. That one can get yeeted, so that one goes over to there. Gonna go merge that to the last. Mm, no, uh, undo. Oh, I've screwed up. I've screwed up. I've committed sacrilege. That one needs to go to there. Merge them there. Oh, and here we go. This is now the issue. Because even though there is the piece of plating that we have, Well, my boat. That's, that's fine. <laughs> that, that's fine. Um, you can now merge that into place. All right, sit a bit. Thank you for coming. Ah, that's an issue. So that position, that wall, is at the wrong height, which means we need to adjust the height. And yeah, I can just by see what it means. Um, okay, that's annoying. So it's, is it that one? No, it's top one. Because it's technically higher than the other one. Nope, don't do that. Remember kids, don't play with the x-axis. It's always the y-axis. That's always the height. No, it's not, it's the z-axis. What am I on about? Oh, dear. 14.7. Copy. Voila, sorted. Right. <clears throat> so now, uh, oh, delete that. Move that into place to there. Boink. To there. So then you have a slight bit of armor along the side, or a slight bit of plating along the side, and then you have what we can see by here. So we can then fill the deck in there. And fill the rest of the deck in by there. And this is actually weirdly looking a lot better than my original, which is good. That, kids, is how you know you're doing it right. Let's fill this in. Oh, why is this playing up now? That one. Yeah. That's BY. And why is that playing about? Because it's double merged over to there. So there to there. Bang, sword. Right. Oh, so that is how long? An hour and 26 minutes to get to this stage. So that's adjusting everything. It's now time to do in here. The biggest pain in my backside, the Actually, I don't know what you'd call it, because the gallery deck's the one underneath. Main deck? Yeah, it's the main deck. Because it's technically the same deck as this. And also... Let's have a look, because that does not look right over here. Someone needs to come out there. 
God. Like that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. That was not cool. Uh, actually, hang on. We can just do it like that. There we are. Easy. I know what I'm doing. One hopes. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because that position is there, that... Uh, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because in theory, that one needs to go forward. Because the ship's got a curved, arm, curved stern. Oh, come on. It's playing up. So a quick save on that, just in case. This is moving multiple vertices and it's all calculating everything. It's going to not like it. There we are, it's not responding. That is an issue. That is a very, very big issue. Control S. I hopefully save that. Did it save? Cool, save. Good. Right. So, hull like that. That could probably be smoothed out. That will be smoothed out, that's fine. And then I have the fun job of trying to subdivide the entire thing and then smoothing it. This is going well. Yeah. Bloody well is. It is not wanting to play ball today. Which I can understand. I mean, to be honest, it's probably because it's getting hot. So second let me let me borrow one of those if you hear any weird sounds don't worry it's me sorting out a something having to do this downstairs at my girlfriend's parents table I think it does doesn't my laptop does not like where it is and because streaming does like to use a lot of CPU power. The CPU is getting hot. So if I've elevated, ew, Jesus, elevated it, it should run better now. Which it does. Good. Right. Now, the pain in the ass there is the stern of this ship. I mean, technically speaking, it looks fine it follows the curves it's just this section down aft it's it's like it needs an extra bit to play with i have got one it just makes a lot of sound which is not good for recording or doing anything like this it's currently at home in Wales. There we are. We can then bring that one out slightly because even even though the stern is 
you know a funky section of a ship it's still technically streamlined so it needs that streamlining effect right let's connect that up to there and let's connect that down to there so we can then at least you know, sort of not make it look like it's well blocky <laughs> for starts. The problem is the hull is it's very um, strange. So it looks like it's got a transom stern at the moment. It definitely shouldn't have a transom stern. It should definitely be more circular. But I think if we we could do a quick subdivision over the stern and then that one, that one Whiskey, you're good at this, aren't you? In terms of doing subdivision of bollocks. Sorry, that should not have said that. You're good at doing subdivision in terms of... <laughs> Bloody hell. Low RCS does not mean anything. Trust. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you. It means absolutely bugger all until you're under attack by a missile then then it means something but right now no definitely does not mean definitely does not mean anything so when you so selecting this all so to make sure that every single line that's exterior to the ship is sharp and then obviously curving the hull with the subdivision and the automatic smoothing. That is just select the exteriors, isn't it? And all the bits you want it to be sharp. See, I'm still learning, kids. <laughs> Sometimes you need a daddy to tell you. Sometimes. Or is it worth just going with the actual um, lines? Gears. Assuming that's that, that and that. If you want edges sharp, select if you want sharp and add a sharp modifier. There is also an edge split modifier, right? Okay. And what do you recommend using for that? Do you recommend me just finishing off the hull first before doing that, or would you recommend just me just? Right. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's make those edges sharp because they're technically the top of the gunnel and they need to be sharp. Probably also go for the center one. Yeah, because that needs to mold into there. The 
drop down modifiers right there. Ah, okay. Okie dokie. Uh, edge split. Right, got you. Okay, I'll do that in a second. Once I've selected every single bit I need to do. Because this is going to be fun. Get around here. Uh, it's that one, that one, that one. That one needs to be sharp because that's kind of the curve that you need to see on the side of the ship. Bang, bang. Oh, and I need to do these one. Dink. And oh, all right, then edge split. Uh, we're going to put that to seventy degrees because that's kind of how you have a sharp edge. <laughs> Although, I think that's right. I think I need to select the individual edges to then do the subdivision and then do this move, I'm assuming. So if that's the case, let's do this. Uh, which one was the one that I previously had that has all the uh, that's inner that's outer inner right cool so meow. Right, okay, so there's that one, there is that one. As you can see, this is how the ship is made up. There is a lot of stuff. So like that, and then... Oh, there's also that one, isn't there? No, don't want that one. Uh, to there. Job on. Uh, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, that one. What I want? No. Do you want that one? So, from there, I'm assuming subdivide. What the hell is that? Um, yeah. Have I got the forward part in there? Right. Okay. Forward. And. And watch the entire laptop die. Oh, that's... That's horrible looking. What the... We're going to do that.
simple. Mm. Yeah, not sure on that. Does not seem to like it. Which either means I've screwed this up. Hmm. Starts as I there's the ones I shouldn't have done. That's the one I shouldn't have done. Where did I go wrong? What's a weird angle there? Let me just see. No, I think it's a normal angle. Okay. Hmm. Is it worth just subdividing the entire ship? Because if you look at it, it technically should. I don't know. Whiskey. Why is my mom broken? That's a bit weird. Yeah, those, that one. Cool, right. What, so you have to smooth the entire ship first? Uh, do you want to try adding smoother to everything first? Right. Is it that one? No, that one. Not that one. And then we'll see how fast this renders. Um. I mean, the hole doesn't look that bad now. Well, to what it was before in the original one. Just including the weird stuff that's up here, but you know, still. Yep, still looks blocky. Still is very blocky and panelly. Is there anything else you wanna you suggest, Whiskey? Would you suggest I try a different one? Right. 
Let's get rid of that one. That one, 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 that one. That one, that one, that one, and that one. Now let's add a subdivider. Uh, right. Okay. Simple. Gloss doesn't really look like it does anything to it, except it just makes it look weird. No, I don't have sharp edges on everything. Well, no, yeah, I do. For those of you who can't see the commands on the sides, this is the commands on the sides. Once we sort out of the hull, we'll work on the main deck. And now I'll start sticking in stuff like, um, Uh, right. So I'll delete that. Uh, ditch the subdivision in a minute. Right, so in that instance, What do you recommend? Um, so let's start from any class destroyer. Ditched the edge, I ditched the subdivision. Uh, smooth is on. What would you recommend then? Because whenever I seem to do a hole, it never seems to want to work properly. Remove corrective. Use a procedural effect on active. Hmm. Does not seem to want to work. Or at least I've just done it wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I just love how big it is compared to the. Oh god. Makes me cringe thinking about, you know. I spent three weeks doing the one. I realize it's way too big. Um. It's a really small ship. Looking at it, it's only about. Seven meters longer than a Type Twenty Three frigate, which, put into comparisons these days, that's these things are kind of big-ish. Got a tug.
Yeah, the ed there is no edges on it. The edge modifier has been removed. Completely. Wasn't my helpful when I got rid of the original. So that's what, right, let's have a look in the render viewer. See what it looks like. So it's still a bit platey. Hey, the entire thing was blue anyway. Like, the entire thing is blue. <laughs> That's the problem I have. But if I ditch that. So, what I mean by this is, because I've got the new, in, so when I, as soon as I installed the new update for Blender, and I went in and basically, you know, just started building, everything was blue anyway. I don't know if that's a new thing with the update or I, or what, but that's kind of where I am right now. I didn't actually fill the bottom of the ship in. That's awkward. So that's very ugly. Ugh. Let's sort that out. Let's fill the bottom of the ship in. Control E. Remove all edges. There we go. What's that? Let me fix my hole. And I screwed up. Hit and do. Hit and do. Cool. All right. Start the entire ship. Again. Okay. Okay, makes sense. Cool. So, ba, 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 ba. do that across the edges you want to move. So, I'm gonna want them to all be vertical lines. So, do, do. I'm doing. Oh, no, don't do that. Do that. Oh, there's a faces in there. No, it's not, it's fine. Then you wanna go that way. Do that. Then you wanna go that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Uh, up, 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 up. Then you wanna go that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. That one. Inside there, you want it to be smooth. Jogger. What's wrong there? Why is that not selected then? There we are. That's going to be an issue, but there, but that's fine. We can sort that out later on. Just because of where exactly that is, 
need to basically make it so it can so you can put in the casement Jan's glass fine uh, bam 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 then hopefully if I do the verticals they should be fine hopefully do 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 Cool. That's fine. Bang, 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 bang. Oh dear, don't do that one. Oh dear. Screwed up. Screwed up. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. And then, hopefully, this will subdivide the entire bloody ship. Or smooth it out, so it doesn't look like. Bit more professional version of Minecraft. That's the hope. And that one. And the issue I'll have after this is trying to work out which one's which in terms of trying to curve out the hull of the ship. Uh, that one's fine. Boink, 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 boing. Especially with the internal lines on this. Um, it's like there. There, 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 there. Uh, is that one? Right. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. Okay. Here goes nothing. Let's see how this goes. We might be in for a treat. There's a line, there's a line. Have I selected that one as well? And that one. Let's make sure oh, we've got that, not just the ship. Right, and then it's, it was. What was it? It was clear, wasn't it? Um, sharp clear. Okay. So sharp clears have been removed. And then what was it? From that point onwards, it was. The whiskey, that's done. It was then into subdivision, wasn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Apparently, um, apparently, it just likes to keep it, uh, yeah. That works well. Is there any other ideas, Whisk? Before I, uh, start to randomly do stuff to the hull? Oh, 
What about... Ugh. Now it looks like a wreck. There we are. We built the wreck of the Monmouth. Actually, hang on. Hang on a second. Uh, no. No, 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 no. Better there, better there, better there. Actually, wait, hang on. Hang on, hang on a bit. Nope. No, 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 no. No, that's, um... Well, some of them have got the edges, some of them don't. And I'm pretty sure I selected these correctly, so why... Oh, why has this... become odd? Hmm. That is awfully strange. Very strange. Very, 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 very strange. Oh. Right, let's have a look, see what this looks like in the viewport. Goes up to six. Six levels in the viewport. Let's have a look what she looks like in a render. My guess is it's going to look slightly weird. So whiskey, have I done it right or have I done it wrong? Now, based on the fact I'm pretty sure this is taking a long time to render, I'm pretty sure I might have done this right. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Well, it doesn't look that blocky anymore. I mean, you can sort of see some of the... I think I've done that right. I think. Which must be good. Okay. Okay. So, do, 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 do. levels in the viewport, right? Okay. So I think I've done that correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to quickly go to the toilet to make another cup of tea. And what we'll do is we'll have a quick little interlude here for about two minutes whilst I go and do what I need to do. And they will be back. So, give me one second. Tell you what, I will leave you on the render. I'll leave you on the render. And I'll be back in a second.
Right, hello ladies and gents, sorry, back, got a cup of tea, got some biscuits, happy days. So, um, yeah, so this, this is, so far, the progress, um, I guess Whiskey decides to run away. But, at least the ship looks better and doesn't look so, well, blocky. <laughs> now, excuse me, the next thing I need to do is... Okay, so that worked better in the render. We'll have a look. Because I now need to go in and actually remove or start putting in the portholes you'll see along the side of the ship. Because I tried this before. I tried it with the original original ship. I had external portholes I slapped onto the side of the ship. What I've come to realise is that's probably not a good idea. And I've been watching a gentleman called Titanic Animations. Yeah, that's it. That's a good yeah. He has cut his portholes into the side of the ships. So he's basically cut them in and then done an internal extrude and then obviously brought it into the side of the ship. So I'm going to do that for this to make it look a little bit better. Just because, you know, that's kind of that looks good and plus you then have the circle in the side of the ship which is there so when you come to paint the ship you just go black 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 or stick light 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 and you get the picture so that's kind of what I'm gonna do so give me one second Top tip kids, don't buy digestive biscuits from Morrison's because apparently they don't open like a normal digestive biscuit. Kind of annoying. Cool. So now I know that that is completely sorted and fine. I can remove that, bring in the side view, ditch that. We'll sit the portholes in. <laughs> Watch it, I don't think those biscuits are going to be able to get to you. So we'll stick these in. That way, hull is completely done. You don't need to worry. We just walk, go as we share, or go as we please. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, oh god, don't do that, um, ditch. Is like that. Actually, no, we won't do it like that. I need. Um, where is it? So the Gizu de Cornwall has his external uh, Titanic 3D. Hm. Top tip, don't do that because it comes up with an actual movie. 
<laughs> oh, that was that was strange. Watching that in three D in, in the cinema. Um, so that's the one. Yeah, Titanic animations. That's the one I need. Um, does it show a photo? Because there's a couple of ways he's done it. I just want to have a see how he's done his. Oh, this looks so good though. It's a very nice looking model. Like, it's a top quality three dimensional model of a Titanic. It's, it's good. Like, very good. Oh my god. So, chat, if you want to, have a look at this. This is a guy called Titanic uh, Animations, who does, like he says, does the Titanic. And he does the uh, real-time sinking of the ships, which is really cool. Highly recommend it. Anyone, if you want to, have a look at it. Because it's good. But you can see on his model that you know it's how quite how high quality it is and all the little plating and all that jazz you can see. It's really good. And I'm trying to imitate that slightly. But it doesn't actually show me any decent photos of the hull, which shows me what the actual portals look like and how he's done his portals. So, give me a second, I might have to go and find his live stream where he was, ch I think he was converting, yeah, he was converting Titanic into Britannic on a live stream. Was it that one? It was that one. No, was it that one? Bear with just a second. Uh, Titanic conversion because he's going through and actually putting in all of the differences or I think it was at least uh, I think it was what was it, it was, that was it, it was the colours so he's going in I think he already done all the white paint along the side of the ship he was then going in and putting in the I wouldn't call it the luminous green strip along the side, but it kind of looks a bit luminous green. I'm just putting that along the side. And you can just about see in the actual video. I think it's that one there. You can just about see those portholes. I don't know if it's going to like me because I'm technically streaming and then I'm going to watch a YouTube video. So we'll have a look. Uh, yes, so he's that's it there. How has he done them? So he's cut them out. And I can't see because it's um, this might kill the stream. Are they are they actually circles? Or are they not? I can't tell. Um, zooming, zooming, come on, zooming faster. They are superimposed. They, well, no, they're actually cousins of the hull. Right. Hmm. Okay. Okay. There's that. Let's find the one before that, because I think the one before that actually had a better view. What I remember. But don't quote me. I know this is a bit of a tangent, I do apologise, but, you know, I want to make sure that 
you know, if I can see what people who are better at it are doing compared to me, then happy days. I I want to sort of see what they do, see how they do it, and you know, see if I can do it better. I think this. This was the one I watched before, and it showed. I haven't lost my mouse. There it is. It won't get closer. Oh, I think that's close enough. Well, they extreme are they are they booled is he even booling or not because if he has that's very very time consuming for those who don't know Jim um booling is when you uh sorry it's right so you take an object into an object and then sit yeah that must be it Well, that's fun. Interesting. That is very interesting. Right. Who loses it? So, yeah. So, booling is, say for instance, you've got a circle. You shove it into the side of the ship. You put a bool feature onto it. And it'll then stick in a hole and then put a superimposed... No, it'll impose something into it. So, essentially... If you wanted to put like anchor chains or an anchor hawser into the bow of a ship, like I will show you. So by here, you can just about see. Can you see? Ah, apparently it's gone. Anyway, as you can see there, you can just about see the anchor chains go to the anchor and come out. On a, when you bool something, you put a, you can put like a, say for instance, a rod from the forecastle down through the ship and out the anchor hawser hole. And that will basically make you a hole and on the outside it will create a tube, essentially. And that's what you can do. And it will just minimize the entire thing inside. You can then set it up so you can't actually see the hole or the the tube. And that's how you do it. But for him, if I if I see this correctly, to have done what can be only described as every single porthole on a Titanic or Olympic class liner in bullying is Jesus Christ. Actually, is it? I don't think he has, unless it's this is all done on uh, under subdivisions and stuff. But if that's the case, bloody kudos to him. That is that is very very crazy. So let's right. Let's stop fangirling over. Titanic animations, let's get this done. Also, top tip, the top thing, if you can hear a random plane, don't worry. My girlfriend lives on the flight path of an airport. <laughs> Which is kind of annoying, but it is, it is what it is. It's, um... It's quite funny because every single time you hear a plane, you have to go outside and have a look in it. And it's like, ooh, what's that? Sometimes it could be a military aircraft. Sometimes it could be a B-52. Sometimes it's a KC-135. Sometimes it's an A-400M. Sometimes it's a... Uh... What's the other one? What's the other one they have? Uh, C-130. That is not right. Um... Uh, ooh. Sometimes, yes, uh, sometimes we also get, what are they called? Uh, oh, Jesus. 
what were they called? See, my plane knowledge is awful. Give me a ship, happy days. Give me a plane, I'm going to scooby do. That's how bad my knowledge is with planes. Has that gone in live? No, right. We're going to have to do some booling. So, we are going to close that down. New collection. Booling parts. Uh, what we call scuttles. Because, top tip for na nautical terms, a scuttle is a porthole within the hull of a ship. And then a porthole is a porthole but in the superstructure of a ship. So there we are. There's a new little nautical term for you there. What's a little nautical uh, thing? Can't remember what's called. Now I'm pretty sure this is going to be very limited. So I'd need to do it the same on the other side. Actually, that's fine. That's fine. I'm worrying too much. Right. Go in here. Add a mesh cylinder. What you want to do is do 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 do. I'll come over there. Turn them ninety degrees. Because every single porthole is always ninety degrees from the hull. Technically. And you're going to want to make that smaller. And that's there, so... What we can do... Um, they technically can be used to scuttle the ship as well. If the ship is sinking, and... Well, I don't know if it would technically classify as... That because um, by the point you've got water entering the scuttles of a ship, the ship is most likely going to founder. Um, looking at Monmouth, because apparently some of the details where Monmouth was in her last fight, well, first and only fight, she had issues where her forward part of the ship was flooding, she was down in the bow. We don't exactly know how high the water was, but her, she had some fires, the fires were out, but then it came to the point where they were, they were able to sh make the ship turn and, you know, attempt to apparently ram, but don't actually think that the um, scuttles were compromised at that point. So, as you can see here, this is how you would essentially bull a Portal. Sorry, scuttle. Look at me. <laughs> I'm bad at this. Oh, God. Where was this one? This was upper deck. Well, 10 o'clock, that would be one deck. Would that be one deck? Main deck is usually one. Lara next door. That'd be two deck. Or deck two, deck three, deck four, deck five, deck six. Yeah, right. Now that'd be zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. So looking at deck two, we're going to have copy that, move that over, and that needs to be slightly higher. This was an issue I ran into with the the first Monmouth was when I sorted out all the scuttles for the ship. I realised that you know when you try and copy and paste it to the other side of the ship, with utilising the mirror feature, um, it's a little bit difficult. 
say the least, because you are limited by the angle of your actual object you are, you know, mirroring. So to, keep, to make you understand that a little bit better, because that's probably confusing, which I admit will is most likely confusing. Um, so when you angle something in, so it goes into a hull, and you start to mirror something, the mirror will go from the rear end of the object, technically speaking, or however it is angled in comparison to where the where the origin of the point is. Even when the origin of a point is set to the three D cursor, which is the one bar here, and you set it directly to the center line of the ship, if Say, for instance, this porthole by here is angled slightly and inside the, into the ship. If you mirror that, it will go off an angle on the other side of the ship. So it won't be in the exact same place. So you have issues with that, which is quite annoying. But that being said, it is what it is, and you know, you kind of deal with it. Now, I think one issue we have is this upper deck paneling. Yeah, we've got some issues with the upper deck plating, so we need to go to this. There we are. Just because when you actually look at the portholes, the portholes are either in the outer plating or the inner plating. And then what I want to do is actually have this plating that we see here uh, below. So each, essentially, each part is right here. So it actually looks, you know, looks like it's meant to, because that's what they tended to do. There, yes, there is. There's a quick firing 12 pounder gun. It's an internal mount. But there is one there, which is for that. It was a anti torpedo boat gun. Pretty much pointless because the you know, the arcs were a bit shocking. But yeah, there, they, <laughs> there is one there. Now I just need to work on this part right here because I've now screwed up because I've made the plating down here. So that one's that one. So I need the internal plate. Which, oh, that's good. That is very good. Okay, so I can bring the internal plate down, which is fine. Which is groovy. I need that to be across the stairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, well, maybe, just maybe, I might actually do us a Kamchatka 3D model. Maybe. I mean, that would be quite funny. <laughs> and I know there is one on uh, the game called Navy Craft. No, it's not Navy Craft. Um, Naval Art. It's a good game. Recommend guessing it. But there's one on there. <laughs> Which is quite funny. I mean, it's, it's the most pointless ship ever. It's not a warship. It's just... Yeah, <laughs> it's just that. No one, re no one needs to, you know, make any introductions with the Kamchatka because, well, it's Kamchatka. She is. Um, what's the best word to describe Kamchatka? She is not a seaworthy vessel. 
in terms of war fighting or any sort of combat operation. She is um, dreadful. She's got to be dreadful. Yeah. Right, I need that one. That was at 14.4675. Copy. Yep. I like it too. I, I did have fun trying to, you know, make. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. I have planned it. I have played it. Um. The. What I like about it is, is because I tried to make a impenetrable Kirov class battle cruiser with the with ridiculous amount of close in weapon systems. Just because, why not? Because there's that little mission where you, or the um, the test you have to do, to sort of see if your ship is kind of worthy. And yeah, <laughs> it was um. It was good. It was one of those that I thought, geez, it, hell, it's a cure off. It must, must withstand a barrage of aircraft. You know, because it's a cure off. We haven't got SAMs, so you might as well just, you know, try and blow it out of the sea. As, well, blow them all out of the sky. Because, you know, that's, that's how you do it, isn't it? And, um, yeah. <laughs> God almighty, that was... <laughs> it was ridiculous. Genuinely, honestly ridiculous. Like, I don't know how many versions of an AK-630 are stuck on there, or I think it was a Phalanx they had, which is the default one in the game. don't know how many Phalanx are stuck on it, but oh my God. <laughs> oh my Jesus. It was, um, it was a lot of Phalanx. Um, no, um, so this was a fan-made uh, ship they had. Fan-made Kirov. I just went, <laughs> like, YOLO. Strap as many AK-630s on it, or phalanxes as possible, and I was like, YOLO, be fine. That's kind of what I did. I was kind of bored one day. So you kind of get the gist of it. It's just like, ugh. <laughs> Woke up in the morning and thought, hmm, what am I going to do with my day? Get off, that'll do. <laughs> that'll be fine. You know, just one of those random things you do with your life. Also, try to stick as many of those weapons on board. Uh, what's her name? Berezia. The Russian version of a Raz ship. Or replacement of a sea ship. It's the one that was part of, I think she was Black Sea Fleet. No, I think she was Pack Fleet. No, no, she was definitely Black Sea Fleet. Yeah, she was Black Sea Fleet. And then they got rid of her. But yeah, you could basically play with that. And it was, it was great. <laughs> Stuck. I think it came with four Phalanx on board anyway which is meant to be representing the AK-630s. And when I took her out to sea for the little test to sort of see how many aircraft she can withstand, she was going in with 15 to 16 phalanx on board. <laughs> Just because why not? <laughs> Just because why not? You might as well go... Go in, all guns blazing, or go home. Even though my personal opinion on closing weapon systems is um, they're pointless. They don't really mean much. They don't really do much. Yeah, it was. That's kind of what I did. It. <laughs> it was, that's what I was doing. Right. Okay. There's that now done. Ditch those. We don't need them. I just put a hole in. 
I mean, my personal opinions on multiple different uh, naval issues that people seem to think are very, very big issues are um, is something we should never get into a conversation about because, yeah, <laughs> like the issue about radar cross section doesn't really mean much. People bang on about it, and it really comes into play when you're having a, to go up against a missile. It's like one of those. Or, uh, because whenever when anyone says that a ship's got a radar cross section of a, uh, what's it called, a fishing boat, it doesn't really mean much. And this is coming from someone who kind of has looked at radars and kind of has looked at the radar cross-section of a ship and the radar return and yeah <laughs> the only time I can think of is going to help or you know play a major factor is when you actually look at a radar paint on a radar screen which the radar paint is how much radar returns you get and I mean it pff, it's not um yeah it's not great it doesn't really do much. Catch you later, Zero. Have a nice day. Or have a nice rest of your... Yeah. Or go for a day. So for those of you who are still here, or those of you who just joined, hello, welcome. Um, I know it's quiet today. I know there's not many people around. Um, I had some issues with my streaming software, so I can't. So I wanted to play some music today and you know have a nice chilled out live stream where we just you know just build stuff. Um, music didn't really want to play on my laptop because I decided to try and speed it up, and then deleted weirdly the music app. I think it's called Groove. <laughs> Hello, Corey. You're always. So yeah, that was that was a slight issue, but aside from that, that's kind of you know life issues. Um, so yeah, hopefully next time, if people want, I could do another one of these, focusing on a different ship or you know doing the rest of Monmouth because Monmouth, the original took me three weeks and I wasn't completely finished with it before I then realised that the ship's too big. So, I mean, if needs be, I can do another live stream or two or four or a couple, you know, as a way of you know, engaging the audience. Also, having some background music so it's not just boring and you listening to me dulcetly talking about crap. <laughs> and I mean, if you want to, there is a, there is a chat you can obviously talk in. Because, you know, I've got two screens. One of them is... Obviously, Blender, you know, building Monmouth itself. But then there's also the one that has the stream and you know has the live chat, so I can actually see what you guys are saying. Um, obviously, Corey's talking to me, so it's good. It's good you're okay. I'm, I'm all right. Still alive somehow, <laughs> which is always the best way of being. Um, what else is there we can? really you know talk about the um is you know the future of you know if i if this is popular and i and me you know doing all these ships it's popular for videos then happy days i would happily do more um it's a good skill to have to learn how to make a three-dimensional model which then opens doors to a lot of other things so I highly recommend anyone who wants to get into 3D modeling, do it because it's good. Um, and it also opens the doors to you being able to make your own actual genuine models. Yeah, we could do. <laughs> well, I'm, I might not be able to in the future though. <laughs> I, I might have a job, <laughs> finally. Yeah, that's a, that's a story for a different day, guys. Um, 
but yeah, so you know, having different ships. So, you know, it's all well and good. You know, the old way of doing these where I had loads of photos of ships. Now, with the ability I have of being able to build these ships and actually, you know, model them, knowing how the animation system works, I can get these ships to actually look like what they're meant to look like in real life in glorious 4K or in actual genuine colour. <laughs> Especially for some of these ships that are built in the 19... Well, the start of the 20th century. Some of these ships, you know, you won't be able to see because obviously they are in black and white. Whereas, you know, nowadays I can... We can change the colour of the ship so it actually looks like the actual colour instead of, you know... 50 odd shades of grey and tan and weird ass micro colour that they had. Is that even a thing? Yeah, I think it is. They can now actually, you know, sail on a theoretical three dimensional sea with, you know, flags flying, smoke coming out the funnels, the ship actually looking like it is meant to be a real ship. Granted, I might not be able to get it to look photorealistic, but even still, that is the capability that I have now at my fingertips, which is good because, you know, 3 d is cool. And it means, you know, when it comes to obviously making, uh, making documentaries and stuff, so actual genuine battle reenactment videos, so Coronel for us, instance is a very good one to do it's a multi-ship multi-side well every single battle is multi-sided but you know it's <laughs> the possibilities for this is endless i mean if you think about it Yeah, that'd be fine, Corey. Um, I'd be happy with that. Just, you know, it, I'll sort something out in a bit. I mean, I have to stop streaming for a little bit in about an hour or so, maybe two, because, you know, the missus will be back. Hey, Josh. So, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the issues I have. But, yeah, you know, like I said, the abilities we have with this is endless. So, I could even, if anyone wanted me to, do an actual reenactment of what happened in the Falklands between, say, for instance, Sheffield or Coventry, Antelope or Ardent, or even Glamorgan. Which I think Glamorgan would be a real cool idea. Josh, of course I have not forgot your bloody name. <laughs> Remember, we played War Game once and you just literally spammed McCurvers everywhere. McCurvers, McCurvers, or whatever it is. That is really tank. See, I'm not good with tanks. I'm good with ships. <laughs> Ish. I know some people literally ripped me a new backside for um for miss saying one of the videos i can't remember was it the type 12s yeah it was a type 12 video and everyone literally ripped me a new backside because well i did not have a look at the uh, real pronunciation of the name of the ship which is my fault I just I just pronounced it how it how I thought it was and how it looked, but yeah, it is what it is. Is it? Damn. Is that better now? I know there's that's the tone. Uh, that should be able to go there. Sorry, I don't want to blow your eardrums out. I don't want you to have the echo of my uh, my girlfriend's dining room. <laughs> but if that's better, kudos. Or if you're hearing too much, let me know. And I can change it. But 
It's nice to see all people actually talking. It's a very, very quiet stream this morning. I seem to have just been talking to myself and no one was <laughs> no one was answering for about 45 minutes and it's oh god this is not going well but you know at least there's people here today great i'm glad i've sorted out the audio what almost three hours into a stream <laughs> oh god <laughs> that is true that is true Although, I think you'd want to uh, block out the sun with challengers, preferably Chally 3s. Um, <laughs> I mean, you definitely don't want to go up against... Well, you don't want to block out the sun with T90s because, well, the turrets will block out the sun when you ammo rack them. Or, you no, know, even if you shoot them, they'll just lob them skyward. But, remember kids... If Russia's doing something wrong, don't tell them they're doing don't tell them they're doing something wrong. Let them make the mistake and watch them make the mistake twenty seven other times. That's okay. To be fair, I kinda turned it I turned it off on OBS, which is the streaming software I used when I went to make a cup of tea. And I also turned it off on my little box that I have that controls the sound and the pitch and sensitivity of the microphone. So, yeah, I mean, I thought I got it to the right levels, but never mind. Doesn't matter. It's all fine. So for fun fact, because I'm full of fun facts and useless information. Did you know that a Monmouth class armoured cruiser has 72 portholes and scuttles along the side of the ship, each side, totaling to 148 scuttles and portholes? There's a bit of useless, you know, trivia for you. <laughs> Just in case it randomly comes up on a pop quiz or. I randomly do a pop quiz at some point, I don't know, just in case. So yeah, there you go. Right. As you can see, that is a lot of portholes and scuttles. Remember kids, scuttle in the hull, porthole above the main deck in superstructures. There we are. You learned something new. For those of you who've just joined. So yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Although that kind of looks a bit like a bunch of cannons, so, you know, <laughs> lots of cannons with this ship. And thinking about this, if I can do that, and do all the bullying for that, I can technically do the discharge over boards. <laughs> well, Josh, the reason I learned that is because of the... Because of a BR. There we are. <laughs> it was a BR on seamanship from 1960 something. And it had all three of the Tiger class cruisers in it. It had dolphins, as in the pillars you can moor a ship alongside had some other stuff in it that you know today definitely would never ever be used um what else did they have in it that was quite funny they had they also taught you how different types of anchors um i mean i think spook just started to have the county class uh frigates no 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 county class destroyers sorry Of course they don't. I mean, I was meant to read the BRs. Never read them. Because who likes BRs? For those of you who are confused, a BR is a book of reference. So, you know, just in case you were curious. Uh, that one... D 
ditch that one. Yeah, as you can tell, some of these plans aren't technically accurate. However, what I can do now is because there is positions that show the discharge over boards, I can stick them into place, which is good. Right, let's borrow, let's close that down a minute. Actually. Uh, bu -bu 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 let's copy that. <laughs> I'm surprised James wasn't there. And let's do that. Boot. Booling pots. That's my main fun. What? Oh well. Discharge over boards. Remember, kids, if you want to do a realistic ship, make sure you have discharge over boards. Because if you don't, it's not a real ship. <laughs> and for those of you who are confused what that living hell is a discharge over board, clues in the name. So when a ship obviously needs to discharge, well, a ship makes a lot of different, uh, best way to describe this, Josh. When a ship is obviously underway or it's doing anything, even when it's sitting alongside in a port, there is still stuff that needs to operate. So cooling systems, uh, firefighting systems, uh, pumps, you name it. They still need to work. And some of this requires water. And this requires a circulation of water. So if you have a... I'm just trying to think what's the best way of describing this. Uh, bu, 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 bu. How do you describe it? Um, so, okay. This is probably that's where I did it. If you've got water come, if you've got a water system going around a boiler room, except looking at this type of ship, the water will need to be dumped overboard, so then the tanks can be refilled, or the cycle can continue. And that's kind of, you know, discharge overboard. That's what it's basically for. You also have another version of it. So, say for instance, your ship is taken on water. So it's flooding, use a discharge of boards, ditch the water off the side. That's kind of how it works. So, yeah, that's... That was a very long-winded way of saying that is what a discharge of a board does. So, yeah. Also, did you know there's, a, there's two different types of flooding? On board a ship, there is actually no, there's three ten, there's three types of flooding. There is intentional flooding, non-intentional flooding, and there is internal flooding. No, yeah, that makes sense. So, say for instance, if you're fighting a fire you obviously produce a lot of water, which is obviously going onto the fire. But did you know that there is one that's still cool? That the amount of water that you produce to fight a fire or to boundary cool technically causes a flood. That's called an internal flood. An intentional flood is to flood ballast tanks or compartments in such a way that it counteracts the flooding of a ship. And then the third one is mm. flooding that you can't control and is not done by you. So, like battle damage, etc, etc. Just some useless facts from me.
pretty useless, but you know, it is what it is. Right, okay, I think there's also a couple of discharge overboards, or there's a couple of them inside the hulls. Yeah, there is a couple. So, I'm gonna put one by there, mm, by there, and by there. Check. Cool. Like so. There should technically also be, if we're looking at this rightly, a couple more below the waterline. Because the pressure inside is greater, so it pushes it out. There is also a torpedo tube each side, which is nice. Good old Royal Navy for putting on torpedo tubes on the sides of ships. So, you know, if you want to, if it's your last ditch way of uh, trying to take out some pesky Germans, <laughs> oh god, oh god, that's not what you want. So yeah, if you wanted to do, um, make a German ship cease to exist in a surprise way, torpedoes were the best option. That's not straight, but yeah, oh well. Cool, there we are. There's a torpedo tube. And what we can then do, this is the cool part about Blender, and this is also the cool part about Oh, you spaz. Josh, you're not meant to do that. Oh, no. It doesn't do that. Why? Actually, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, ooh. Oh, disregard that. Push that slightly inside the ship, like so. Then we will. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, this does not surprise me. They are all, after all, the RFA. Oh, look at you having an FB5X. Hated those things with a passion. Now, we're going to bring that out slightly. There we are, torpedo tube door, technically, is in place. Cool. Right, there we are. That's the torpedoes. That's all the discharge over boards and all the scuttles and all that jazz. Hey, hello, James. <laughs> nice, uh, nice commander rank there for uh, your devoted service to the cause. <laughs> How are you, mate? You're all right. Josh, what you need, mate, what you need is something a lot cooler. Something called, oh, what the hell was it? James, remind me what the um, firefighter equipment on the QE is called. Um, it's on the FP5X. It's a Delta nozzle. You need to get yourself a Delta nozzle, mate. Deltas are cool. And now... Hmm. Now I just need to put the tip in, and that should be enough for the portholes. Scuttles! Shit. Sorry. Sacrilege. Same bloody portholes. They're not portholes, they're skulls, shit, mate. 
Looks like I'm imagining some salty blinking specks gonna be like, oh, you can't say that, it's wrong one. Was that me? I can't tell. <laughs> Wouldn't put the password to be me. <laughs> uh, no, they are definitely not going to do that at all. The firefighting equipment is equivalent to what they had on Monmouth in 1918. That's, that's, that's the level of firefighting equipment on the Type 23. I mean, like, come on, bro, bro. We all know that the Royal Navy still uses the same stuff that they have in East Nor House or East Nor Castle for firefighting, which was made in the 80s, well, 1980s. No, not in the 1980s, 1880s. That's the badger. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I feel like these are going to need to be possibly angled, I think. As you can see, if you haven't been following since the very start of the stream, That's the funny thing. It's brilliant. I just love how the fact that Mosford literally sailed with nothing. <laughs> well, if you want, you can hear Falklands a lot more if you want to. If this works, and we get, and people like the 3D models, the 3D d descriptions, the 3D. Uh, documentaries on battles I think we might be having a couple of Falklands War entries which I think would be quite cool so if anyone likes the idea of Falklands War uh, videos, please let me know I might even throw in a couple of guest speakers Josh, James maybe a couple of well I need to get some Spanish, no Oh yeah, I need to, don't need to get some Spanish people yet. Um, I need to get some Germans to do some voice lines for me. <clears throat> Be a little, little tiny collaboration between the community. Right, there's those forward things in place. Before anyone asks, and they think it looks weird, there is a me there is a reason for this. Okay, so don't worry. <laughs> I haven't randomly lost the plot. Unlike Josh, Josh has lost the plot. <laughs> I know, I know. Be easy to find a Type 42 destroyer plan, wouldn't it? No bloody Monmouth plan. <laughs> yeah, join the club. Join the club. That's 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 what I mean. There is hardly anything on these class. The only reason I'm doing half of this is because I kind of remember it from the model I'd made for the museum. But that was only half a model. That was, um, how much was it? It was, uh, it was just waterline. It was above the waterline. That was the issue I had, the model I had to make. And even still, it's a bit like, mm, is that qu that's kind of questionable, isn't it? I mean, I'm having to rely on images I've got from Drakinafell. So Drakinafell provided me some photos of the Monmouth class. And he's a good portion of the ships. So I could actually, you know, do the video, do the uh, overall plan. 
To be fair, that actually doesn't look that bad, especially with the torpedo tube. Yeah, that is the problem. There is absolutely, well, pretty much bugger all on this class of ship. Like, I was, I'm tempted to go and ask the archives in London if they have them, because they technically have the plans for the Raglan, technically. Technically have the plans for the Raglan. However, I don't think they are completely 100% uh, like line plans showing the hull form, which is kind of what you want if you're making a three-dimensional model of a ship. You want those hull lines to then get the hull correct. And I don't think they have it. The only place I can think of they would have it is in the four places that they built the ships. Which one of them is Holland and Wolf? But on the flip side of that, some of these ships, especially with the Monmouth class, they were obviously built in multiple different yards. So one of them, well, a couple of them built in Govan. Uh, some of them built by Fairbanks. One of them was built in Pembroke Dockyard. Back then when we actually had a dockyard in Pembroke. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's... it's, it's imp Ah, interesting. Yeah, I want to go and um, see if they have it. Because you all know I want to do that Battle of Imbros video. Even if M28, M29, whatever the... Yeah, it was M28. I was doing my heading in Blender and I had to redo it in Cinema 4D and never finished it. But that's a completely different story because I'll be doing it back in Blender with all the tricks and stuff I've learned so far but yeah they're, even still the <laughs> hell one of these was built in bloody Portsmouth and the other one's built in Guz I mean shows how far they've fallen they can't build bloody ships in the dockyards anymore I mean the last ship to be technically built in the dockyard in Portsmouth was um Hayden's fourth. No, not fourth, uh Clyde. It's one hundred and zero some of the lines for the class when Armstrong Oh really Ah great. I love it when people are less cooperative. I love it. It's just like, you know, you ask people for stuff. And, you know, you, you go in, you're all jet, all kind. You're like, hello, um, I'd like to, you know, ask for some plans for the ship because I'm doing this, blah, 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 blah. blah. And they're all like, no. Nah. <laughs> Do you have 20 grand? Uh, no. <laughs> I do not have 20 grand. Do I look like I've got 20 grand? And they're like, no, you can't have them. Off they go. That's, unfortunately, what we have to deal with. Um, probably Nelson. Because Nelson actually has white, has, like, signal and Guz doesn't because it's Guz and Guz is well the place you ditch gash so Josh try and get yourself a Pompey 23 we're all living on a Pompey 23 Pompey 23 a Pompey 23 we're all living on a Pompey 23 a Pompey 23 a Pompey 23 Ha, but I never got a Pompey 23. <laughs> I got a Pompey carrier instead, and that was great. <laughs> yes, Greg's might, there might be in Drake, but mate, mate. You can actually walk to Pompey High Street from Nelson. You have a fish and chip shop outside. You also have two pubs, which 
a green king and they're amazing. However, I never went in there because it's full of flipping matlows. Oh, treat yourself. So you'll be going to girls then. Oh. Mate. Mate, I feel sorry for you because you're going to be literally missing half a year tracking imaginary Russian submarines. Or committing three months of your life trying to find the flipping Yesen, and Yesen won't even be there, it'll still be in Severomorsk. Will you be tracking a flipping Kilo class submarine which is doing a surface transit with a tug? Oh, wait, that's happening right now, isn't it? <laughs> well, love it. As you can tell, I have some weird humour. I mean, I can't think of anything worse than being taps. I really can't think of anything worse than being taps. That sounds awful. Like, who wants to be taps? Like, seriously. I mean, what you want is FRE. FRE is the Fleet Ready Escort. So, if you're a right ship spotter, get a, get a FRE vessel. Get to do really cool, but you get to see big, massive ships. Which is why I wish I did. Instead of being a bloody carrier queen. I mean, who doesn't want to go and have a look at the blinking, uh, the Kirov, if she does a transit through the English Channel? Like, come on, who, who wouldn't want to do that? See? FRA. Ooh. So you're either going to be... See, Montrose... If see fun fact actually, if I passed if I actually did my Kellix course and I came off Kellix course, there was a Kellix EW draft on the Montrose. I can't remember which um oh, what was it which uh crew it was, but there was one going. And I could have taken it but I didn't because screw twenty threes. <laughs> I like my life a luxury. <laughs> There's no real point going on the Montrose because Montrose is going to be decommissioned as soon as she gets home. And Lancaster, you don't want Lancaster because she's in the Gulf. So, unless you want to pee about with Iranians and laugh at them when they nick US Navy bloody remote control uh, sailing boats, then yeah, crack on. Or is it just because you want to see a Vosper Mark V class frigate? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't mind seeing a Vosper Mark V. They are quite, quite beautiful looking ships. Good old Sahans. And then you've got the, the modified ones these days. The They're called the... Oh, what the hell are they called? Some sources classify them as the Zhaoyi class. Some others classify them as... Give me a second. You've got Sahand. Oh, yeah. So there's Sahand. Yeah. Sahand is the new version. But the old ones, the Vosmark 5s are the Alvans. Yeah. So... What I was saying was, <laughs> give me more time to escape. <laughs> get to the, uh, get to the mezzes and off I go. 
living the dream. <laughs> living the dream in a 72 man blinking life raft. Life is fun. Oh, I forgot about these ones. That's awkward. Got a bull, he's all now. Yeah, but Josh, don't forget. With an aircraft carrier, with all the luxuries and all that lot, you're technically meant to be protected by a 23 and a 45, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, the Iranians, in terms of what they're building, it's strange. I'll give them credit, my credit's due. The Zhangwei, no, that's Chinese, um, the Jesus Christ. <laughs> I know too many ships. The... Right. So you got these... So the... The ones that were obviously built to surpass the Alvans are called either the Mouj class or the Mouj or the Jamaran. NATO technically classifies them as the Jamaran. The Jamaran is... Um, well... Um, eh, it's it, it's interesting <laughs> it's um yeah I mean in all honesty you got a better gun actually no do they have a better gun no the, the, I think the 76mm gun is actually probably worse than the 4.5 inch but then they have slightly different radars, but they're also ex-French. Uh, they haven't got a hangar, which the other ones don't, which the other ones don't, but they also technically have a flight deck, which is good. You know, it's an advantage. And they've also got the new and improved uh, Zephyr surface to surface missile. So they've got Saccade, which is a Chinese missile, which is also known as YJ-83. It's a good missile. It's subsonic. It's the Chinese counterpart to or Chinese version of Harpoon. So it's, it's all right missile. Does the damage if it hits. So yeah, they're not bad. Not bad little ships. See, the problem about the jam the Jamarans, there's like five different versions of them. <laughs> and the best thing is, there is, what, one, two, three, four ships. There's four ships. There's four different variants, which is completely crazy, because if you look at the Jamaran itself, the weapon system look placement is after the mast. If you look at the second one, which is the one that, ironically, sank off the uh, off the coast of somewhere, I think it was off port. It carries the weapon systems after the funnel, which completely negates the R fire control suite. But also looks like there's a box launcher just forward of the bridge. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you get this at hand, which has a completely different look and an improved radar cross section. Well, a lower RCS. It's. Yeah. It's. Oh, it's weird. <laughs> I do not understand them. Right. So now we've got all these in place, I'm going to keep them here for a second. I'm going to quickly go to the toilet again because. Believe it or not, T goes through you, because that's what it's designed to do. And I shall be back in a second. Let me play some music. Is that good? Yes, back in a second.
Well, that was a bit depressing, wasn't it? Sorry for the depressing music. That was literally the first, like, thing I could find. All right, enjoy your Mackies. Technically not a fellow seaman, Josh, remember? I left the Navy. Not by choice, but it is what it is. Right, okay, so we're now going to focus on getting these to be in the right positions so they're actually sticking outside the ship. So, let us get hull. Let us get rid of the plan. They don't need, um, need that one, need that one. Okay, right. So this is now, this is now the issue we're going to have. This is, because I found out this is the easiest way of doing it when I did the original. And that is, I don't know if I should be laughing or crying to that, Josh. Sorry. <laughs> I really don't know. So let's... Uh, ooh, that's strange. I can't put one there. It's got to be a loop cut then. Right. So I need to go to there. This is the easiest way of doing it. Which boggles my mind, but yeah. Then what we need to do is from this position. And basically do that. Except for the only problem is with this, it's done on the internal. Which is a problem. But not to what ease. Uh, right. As you can see, that's kind of what it's meant to look like. So you need to do that. And go up to there. As you can see, that is now what you have. It's basically the Sponson, Gun Sponson, Casement Sponson. Either way, Sponson's ready to be pulled out. So. I'll do the same on the rear one. So we can then basically bring them out together. So. Uh, oh dear. There we are. Cool. Right, that's the right bit. I wouldn't... Just thinking about it, um, Iranian ships. I wouldn't actually mind doing a little brief on the... Uh, on our friendly Iranian... What's it called? The... Islamic Republic Navy. I think they call it now. They are um, strange little vessels, <laughs> but you know they still pack a little punch. They can't be completely ruled out because you know they're any ship that has a we has a weapon system capable of shooting at an enemy ship from a distance is technically you know a adversary that's worth you know talking about. Even if it is firing a subsonic weapon system. So, yeah, if anyone wants me to do a video on it. Yeah, they are quite... <laughs> they are quite ballsy. 
I'll give them that. They are not bad as it, but they're not, you know, world class at it. They're just a bit meh. They are. Um, they're okay. Yeah, it. That is one advantage that the Iranians have is their asymmetrical warfare, which I'm pretty sure the West is now kicking themselves at because they don't really have anything to counter it, bar fast, heavy caliber weapon systems. Like, <laughs> ironically. The 76 mil guns of the Otomalaras, or, you know, something along the lines of, uh, like a Bushmaster. You know, that, that type of weapon system is kind of key in this instance because it's, you know, able to take out fast targets or, yeah, it's... It, it's crazy to think about what the Iranians have got and or have done in the last so long they've well was it fifty years? Probably about fifty years now. It is ridiculous. And it's crazy, but yeah, gotta give them credit where credit's due. Although they definitely need to work on the aesthetics of their ships. They are not good looking vessels. They are horrible. Really? <laughs> wow. Please send me a photo. Well, please. Jay, do me a favor. Send me a photo of that on Discord. I would like to see this. I would really like to see this. And we Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Iran, I was giving you so much praise here, and you can't off. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's how can you make a missile that hasn't got has got less range than a flipping Three inch gun, oh, you do, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh my god. You know the bit where I said credit where credit's due, they haven't got that bad of a force. Yeah, let's take that back. <laughs> Everything in the house, yeah, well done. Missiles, yeah, kinda. Just, you know, make sure you not turns into a laughing stock. Why, come on. That is just shocking. How can you screw that up so much? I will never, never know. Iran. Doing it better. Wait, hang on, what? Oh, hello. Vasily Tatichev sailed out of the med. Happy days, cool. I was wondering when she was going to go home. I was wondering when she was also going to break down, but yeah, oh well. That doesn't look right. feel like these ones by here need to be a bit further out and then these ones need to be further out as well like that so the gun arcs because the guns go in here and then they can obviously rotate it's roughly about 70 degrees, I think, or a little bit more. 
Let's have a look. Uh, HMS Monmouth. Jesus Christ, it'd be good if I can actually spell it. Looking at Monmouth class cruisers. Um, it's about roughly. Eighty-five degrees, roughly, give or take. Oh my god! Oh my god! That is, that's impressive. That's very impressive. It's impressive how crap it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's. Wow. That's that's honestly wow. How 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 did they fuck that up? Right, there we are, there's a portal there's a scuttle there. Okay, let's do the aft one now. Do 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 Okay, so we need to go with that one. Then we need to go to that one. Then we need to go to that one. We need to go to that one and there. And now this is the issue where I need to. No, that's why I'm gonna do that later. Don't worry. Okay, let's bring this gun out. There we are. Then we're gonna go from there to there. I always find that the aft guns on this is always easier, and I don't know why, but it just always seems to be an easier gun to do, or an easier section to do. And this is gonna be an issue. This is gonna be an issue because how the plating there is lined up with a hull and we're here with the hull it needs to be brought out there needs to be a loop cut placed into there that loop cut needs to be dragged that way to there and then brought out like so slightly angled into there And all I need to do is cut out the guns, Shh, um, make them curvy, and then we're done. Oh, actually, hang on. Hang on a second. That should not overhang. No, it should overhang. Okay. Interesting news, uh, interesting information on that one. Very nice. Oh, Jay, I didn't actually realize you were in the, uh, not in the, YouTube, um, in the Discord channel. Well, I was glad to see you back. I thought you were still in there, but never mind. It's good to see you back. Welcome back. Right. Um, I know your presence was sorely missed. Right, let's stick that in there. Because there is something, there's a position by here that needs to be So in essence, we have it, it just needs to be implemented properly. There we are. 
So what you then do is delete those. Delete those too. And we can delete those lines. Do, do, do. Go into the edit mode. And there's a little tiny walkway on top that needs to be put into place. But because it's a slight issue, because it's a rectangle, I have to do some trickery pokery and weird stuff for it. But this is. Essentially, this is how I did it on the old one. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now I'm looking like a white spaz. <laughs> this is how I did it on the last one, and then screw it up. Yes, of course, this is how you did it on the last one. There we are. There's one. Okay. Apparently it doesn't want to work. Which is annoying. So, never mind. Hmm. Not to bother. There is other ways around it. that is how you do that then what you then do it's because no one wants to see the awful weird ass line in the middle you delete that and you just fill it in fill it in and extrude down then you just line everything up and uh, after Hello, welcome back. Uh, because it was meant to be the name of my company that I technically have, but no one seems to have. Um, shoot. Uh, it yeah, it's the name of the company I have. It's a naval cons naval consultancy, so it was primarily focused on. Uh, information I know of the Russian Navy and you know wanted to sell it all the open source information I have but um, yeah it's um, it obviously hasn't gone well so you know that that's what I'm doing I'm named it that and you know if people wanted to you know get in contact with me they can do it for the technically the company. So yeah that that that's why it's called that. Oh right. how's that look? It's looking better. It's looking like a hull of a Monmouth class cruiser now. It's got torpedo tubes, it's got discharge over boards, let's have a save of that. And then what we can then do is just to be cool is we can show what the real yeah they do a little bit but bear with because once I've implemented these into the right areas and I've stuck in the internal decks I'm then going to copy them to the other side and then it should look amazing. But first, just because I want to do this, I want this to look cool. I'm just going to go there. Doink. Uh, let 
let's go with that. All of those, which are going to move her up. Ah, yes. Um, as you can tell, I already have the guns and um, everything else. So, wow. The, I'm going to need to make redo the guns as well. Oh, however, 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 however. however. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, good. Whew. Because those anchor chains took me about a day, <laughs> a day or so. So did the cleats, so did the hatches, the ladder chains, Bob's your uncle. Good, 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 good. Happy days. Right. Okay, so if I just go control, control, did, 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 bye. <laughs> Back to that. Cool. Right. So, with all that is said and done, let's um, let's put in a couple more of the portholes. Actually, how did the stern look? Yeah, I just need to rearrange them and make them slightly smaller so they all fit. But there's also enough gun lines sticking there. Um, I'm just trying to think of how is the best place to do this. Roughly speaking, that's where that porthole is. Just about slightly off, but there. Now, you need to put down a 45 degree angle. So, let's go 45. Degrees. Yeah, we are. Actually, is it forty-five or is it slightly more than a forty-five? Either way, looks about right. Let's have a quick little cheeky check. Yeah, looks about right actually. Cool. So. It is like a very, very weird old warship that has loads of cannons. 78 per side, that's, a hun that's 142 gun broadside. Plus a little tiny gun set. But yeah, that's, that's good. Right. Now for the fun and games. The bit I've been dreading to do. The bit I've been dreading is to implement all these to the other side, which means I need to make it. Um, oh, there's one on the stern, isn't there? There's one but there. It's like a butt. Make sure that's right, because there's also what I didn't realise with these is World War One era armoured cruisers had their names, single name, written across the beam of the ship at the aft end. So whenever you look at them, yes, I'm back. Hi. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I kind of technically left, but I didn't mean to leave for as long as I did. But yes, I am back. And I come with great fortune. Well, I don't really come back with great fortune at all, do I? Um, <laughs> it's hard to call in my head. Yeah. Um, hi. <laughs> 
One is back. Back again. I know. I know they were definitely missed. I missed doing them. I just... I felt that what I had to do... Right, there's a reason I kept... Dis I disappeared. I was trying to help the Ukrainians fight off the flipping genocidal maniac by the name of Vlad. <laughs> Which, do you fucking you really blame me? <laughs> I mean, technically speaking, I was, you know, providing my insight into the Russians and, you know, trying to you know, help them. So, I mean, I might have disappeared for a bit, but that's, honestly, that's where I went. And, yeah, I, I know my channel, um, well, I wouldn't say my channel kind of, um, suffered for it, because I seem to have gained a, about 250 people. Which, eh, it's not bad. <laughs> Thanks to everyone who, uh, who watches this afterwards. Thank you for subscribing. Um, but yeah, even still. Oh, fair. That's quite cool. I mean, I don't... I don't have the voice of Drake NFL. And I, yes, I do slightly start... This is not a great point to say this. <laughs> I do sometimes... Um, like, I'm not the world's best speaker, I'll give you that. Even though some people want me to go and do talks. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> really? You want me to do a speak, a talk? Like, um, I've got a talk I'm doing in a town called Albert Gaveni soon uh, to a World War One era uh, like club that's very interested in World War One, obviously because they're a World War One club and they're all about history and they want me to do a talk on Raglan and Monmouth so I mean it's, it's, it's quite cool but yeah the um in terms of how the Russian Navy's doing um it's quiet <laughs> Um, this does seem to be quiet on the Eastern Front, but that's because, for what it seems, the they know they're kind of losing big time, and they are starting to. They've, from the reports I've seen, they've apparently moved most of their submarine squadron over to Novorossiysk, back to the base where they were based out of before. Um, Aside from that, the surface fleet seems to just do what the surface fleet does. It's just being a bunch of assholes, essentially. Uh, they go and basically launch caliber strikes at. Uh, it, they go and basically mi drop missiles on Ukrainian targets from sea and then just go back to port and reload and redo again. Uh, although, ironically, with the Grigorovich class, especially the Admiral Makarov, which we've seen conduct two f firings, especially with, obviously, video, we've seen that she has a fire on target rate. Well, from effective firing, she's we've seen her do two firings. One was a six gun, six missiles. But I think both of them were six missile salvos. And the most recent one that we've seen, two of the missiles, no, yeah, two of the missiles did not work. The four went to target. So the most recent one we saw was, uh, so in terms of rounds, I mean missile, but round one was fine. Round two went low. So it didn't hit his effigy point, which is the point where it goes into the cruise phase of its flight, essentially. 
it was it went low and it ended up ditching in the sea. Round three, I'm pretty sure, hit the epogee point, something went wrong, and the missile just turned into basically a space rocket and went to space. So that's great. Um, Four, five, and six hit epogee and went to target. And then some of them got shot down. And I think one of them made it through, but... Yeah. Makarov does not seem to be a good ship for launching caliber strikes, which is good. Because screw Makarov. Because, you know, it's it's a Russian warship. No one no one likes the Russians. For obvious good reasons. Because they're a bunch of mass murdering rapists. And that's probably getting this thing demonetized, so. Woohoo! Happy days! But that's unfortunately that's the facts of um, a war in Ukraine. You know, innocent people dying, and I just you know wanted to help out and just sort of say, look, I got this knowledge, I got this way of being able to identify ships, and I was, you know, showing how you can identify each ship of the class. But yeah. The the Ukrainians didn't want my uh, tactical recognition chart, or I like to call it a chit, because that's what we called it in the Navy. Um, so, oh well. Never mind. However, if you want a Vasily Baikov class uh, chart of all four, and how to identify him, um, I can, I'm pretty sure I can make a poster for it. I have a poster basis for it. I've got all four. But if you want to have a photo or a nice little chart of all four with the stupid tour on its back end let me know I can provide one for you and I was working on a Makarov and Essen and Gregorovich plan for identification so if you want one of those kudos happy days you can have one if you want or a Gregorovich class but let me know um, and I can work out how to do it and I'll work out how to do a A3 print because A3 prints are cool. So yeah, that that's what I was kind of doing. That's where I disappeared to. So yeah, um, what are my thoughts on the Prince of Wales sadly having propulsion issues and the media painting? Right, yeah. So the media does like to hearken on about lots of issues with the Navy. And unfortunately, they don't really need to because the Navy is, you know, it's, yes, it has a couple of issues. I have some personal issues with it, but I don't, I'm not going into that. Um, especially how they treat their personnel, but yeah. Anyway, um, but aside from that, the way that the media print painted the Navy as a whole was ridiculous and stupid. Because no matter what, they are, what, three billion pound warships. And I hate saying that because the flipping media uses it all the time to emphasize, oh, they're a waste of money because they cost three billion or 3.7 billion pound each. And it's like, just get over yourselves, you knobheads. But... Yes, it's an issue, but that's the reason why you have two aircraft carriers. Because, you know, if you didn't, you couldn't go do the Atlantic Future Forum, and you wouldn't also go and do, uh, you know, all the operations that QE's meant to be doing. Because if QE had the issue, she wouldn't be going. They wouldn't be able to do their Baltic deployment at the end of this year, or when they come back, and. You know, it's it's uh, it's stupid, but these things happen. Warships don't always completely work 100% of the time. Ships always go to sea, and they always have defects. They always have issues going on with them. It's a, it's a system that has so many mechanical pieces on it that it's, a, it's never going to 100% work, regardless of the amount of electric... Well, planning that goes into it, or how much you 
put in other systems to counteract it, it's never going to be 100%. And that's the issue that people seem to forget. Because, hell, even when I was on the QE for three years, bloody, we used to sail with defects all the time. It's just a natural part of being on a ship. Loads of ships have it. Some ships have bloody diesel engines that don't work, but they still go to sea. That's not just the Royal Navy, but there's also other navies. Bloody hell, just look at the bloody uh, Pavel de Zarvin, which is the Vasily Baikov with the Tor that's currently operating at the moment. She had to be towed back to port for a, possibility, for a possible propulsion or steering issue. So, I mean, it's not just the, Navy, the Royal Navy that has an issue. It's, it's, it's navies across the world. And until the media then realises that you know, stop trying to flog a downed horse because you're basically doing that. You're basically, in theory, reporting on something that doesn't need to be reported. But if you do, it's technically in a domain that would classify it as treason. Because the way that they talk about it and the way that they actually explain it, it's in a way that's against the views of the military but also against the values of the country for which the military serves and thus saying that well what they have about it and basically harken on about how apparently awful the ship is and how awful the QEs are it's just simply not the case it really isn't the QECs are moderately decently designed yes they have their issues but every single ship in the world has an issue because that's inherent of naval design. So, yeah, what they said is complete treason. I hate them for it. And, yeah, that's pretty much my views on it. They need to grow up and actually report something properly and not try to slander off the military. Because, don't forget, these people are the people who are going to be protecting us whenever we go to a war. And I can guarantee you, some of the people in the military, if they see the media obviously having a go at them, will genuinely say, what the hell is us fi the point of fighting for? Because, you know, if the guys back at home who are reporting, reporting in the media aren't for us, then what the hell's the point? And I'm not saying to go for a full right-wing thing of the military is the be-all and end-all of the world. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that there is a way of reporting military news that isn't detrimental to the operational capability of a military. And unfortunately, people seem to forget that when they're reporting on military subjects. <sighs> so, that was... um. That was a good little rant. <laughs> um, yeah. What do you think of that Royal Navy study? <laughs> so we do a quick final render of our progress today and what I'll then have to do is break for lunch some of our partners on my way on our way home and I will kick this off again at about what 3 30 4 o'clock and hopefully then I can actually work out how to put some music into the back of this so we can actually you know not be here listening to my dull voice or the dull silence okay and that's um that's one worth now. Well do I'll do a little tiny bit off camera. You know, touching up some few little places and <laughs> I like that. Let's hopefully it let's hope it is. But yeah, so I'll um I'll touch up a little bit some bobs. Maybe get all these to be input into the side of the ship so when we come back in about an hour and a half's time if you all are here but make sure you 
keep an eye out for the notification. We'll continue it and we'll smash it out and it'll look good. All right? Cool. I'll see you in an hour and a half. Have a nice hour and a half off. Um, if you haven't already done so, give it a like, please. You know, helps that out. Shows you actually like it and shows you, you know. <laughs> yeah. And shows that, you know, what I'm doing isn't just a load of crap. <laughs> it's actually genuinely doing something and it's actually, you know, my plan for the future is, you know, going to be good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right. Ladies and gents, boys and girls, I'll see you in an hour. Keep an eye out for the notifications and hopefully we'll have some music when we come back and we can progress some more and maybe get this hold on so we can then work on some more fun stuff. Also, share with your friends. More people in here, more engagement you get, the more I feel like I'm actually doing a flipping good job of my life. <laughs> I mean, that is what it is. Right, I'll see you in a bit, guys. <laughs>